Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you the new DJ Focus Pro Kit. I'll show you some of its features, how you set it up and use it, and also I'm going to compare it to other wireless follow focus systems from Smallrig and Tilta. So this is more or less how I'm using this wireless follow focus system most of the time, uh, while I've been sort of testing it over the last month. Now just for disclosure, DJI did send this to me uh, for testing, now they're not paying me for this review. Uh, and also, you know, they're not telling me what to say, so you're gonna hear my honest opinion about it. Uh, now, this is the sort of, like I said, the setup that I've been using most of the time, meaning that I've got two motors up here, one is for the focus, the other one for aperture, uh, and then I also use this hand grip here to uh, control the focus of it. Now, uh, this is not the complete kit, it actually does come with other parts. The whole kit actually comes with this carrying case, uh, which fits all of these components inside. Now you're also going to get this wireless hand unit that you can use uh, to control uh, the, these motors, plus another motor, if in case you want to use this, for example, with a, like a zoom lens, so be able to control your zoom. Uh, and you're also going to get another uh, grip battery. This is for the side grip. You're also going to get a whole bunch of USB-C type cables and, uh, and sort of these rails and attachments so that you can make the whole rig basically work with it, even if you don't have sort of a rail system on your camera, because it does actually come with rails. So to set up the DJI Focus Pro, you're going to need a way to first attach it to your camera, depending on what camera you have, which attachment points you might put it on the top or on the side, for example, like I did. Uh, they do give you this NATO rail, uh, which also will fit uh, the rails that they provide you up here. I don't need this rail because my camera actually does have rails already built into it. But as you can see, I attached this NATO rail. There's also other little attachments they have. If, for example, you want to offset it and all that stuff. Again, this comes in included with the kit. And the first thing you want to uh, attach is basically the side grip. So the side grip, like I said, comes here with the battery attached. And then it has this mount here on this side, which just slides onto the NATO rail here. So basically just slide it from the top. Once you have it in a position you like it, you just lock it here. Once you have the grip on there, the next thing you want to probably attach is the LiDAR. Uh, you can attach it, like I said, uh, to the middle of the camera here uh, because it attaches using the culture mount uh, attachment here, but you can also change that. You can have a little quarter 20 screw here and you can attach it, uh, let's say, to a camera cage. In this case, the actual grip has a culture mount. So I'll just attach it here. And even though it's not perfectly like center with the lens, I found that it still works uh, great. Then you take the USB-C cable, you're going to plug that cable here to the, uh, the first port basically on the side of the lighter, and then you're going to attach it here on the front of the grip, and it says on one side it says lighter, the other side says motor. So you're just going to attach it here. Next thing you probably want to attach are the motors. Again, depends how many motors you're going to use. In this case, I only have uh, an aperture ring and a focus ring. So I'm going to uh, take this motor, which they, by the way, give you these little stickers uh, so you can ma you know, uh, mark them. So I have one marked with I, one for, uh, with F for focus, and this is iris. So I'm going to take this motor first. And then uh, you're basically going to take this cable and you're going to plug it in here to where it says motor on the front of the grip. Then you take your other motor and sort of the same thing. Put it in here. Align it with your focus. And now in this case, you're going to take the cable, the USB-C cable that comes from this motor, and you're going to just daisy chain link them to the first motor here that you plugged in. And there's your whole setup. Now, once you mount your motor or multiple motors, like I said, in this case, I have two of them uh, on your camera. And then the next thing you're actually going to need is some way to control them. Uh, the best way I have found to control them is using this side grip. So this grip is actually really good because that's actually how I carry the camera when I'm kind of working with it. It's a really good sturdy uh, hand grip. You can adjust the tilt of it and all that stuff. And also this will provide the power and control to these uh, motors. Now this hand grip does have a detachable uh, handle here because that actually contains the, the battery that will power this whole unit. Uh, and like I said, the kit that I got came with two of these. Now, so far throughout my testing, uh, this one battery lasts me around five to seven hours. It really depends on uh, how many motors I'm powering and just how, how much I'm actually using the motors. And you can charge it by connecting it to the USB-C here, a port on the, on the bottom. And then to connect it, again, it's very simple. Then you can start up this grip here by pressing the power button here on the side. 
As you can see, it right away loads in our last lens profile. Uh, you can set up different lens profiles. And then now if I just use the little wheel here on the front to turn it, you'll be able to see that as the focus wheel turns, it actually shows us up here as a key uh, what position we are on the focus ring from between you know, the closest to infinity. You can also swipe here to the side and you can go to the live camera view. Here in the live camera view, you can adjust, for example, the settings for the lens profiles, uh, you know, the settings, for example, for the LiDAR. Uh, you can also change here, you can zoom in if you want to. The red button on the grip here and on the hand unit uh, is for triggering the record start and stop on your cameras or the cameras that are compatible with the DJI Focus Pro. If you want to add a new lens profile, uh, you'll swipe down. You have all your different settings here, for example, to connecting to different cameras through Bluetooth. Uh, you can also calibrate here the motor. Here you also have the general settings here. You can change, you can, you can see the attitude uh, settings. You can change language, firmware, all that stuff. If you enter the menu settings up here, uh, you can see your lens profile. So right now we're my 50mm lens. But you can also easily add another lens. So let's say I'm going to add another 50mm lens. And you want to exactly put in the focal length of the, your lens. And then go back. And then you can go start motor calibration. Once it's calibrated, the uh, motor. And then it's going to ask you to first focus on, on something that's one meter away. And of course up here it shows you on the bottom left uh, how far right now it's pointing at a specific object. So as you can see, I've adjusted right now, it's pointing at an object that's about one meter away, 1.05 meters. That's good enough, you can see up here, it shows me that it's within the correct range. And now, just by turning the front ring here on the grip, I can pull the focus, and obviously for this, you wanna actually look through your cameras, make sure that you are actually focused properly. Once you are, you just click here and confirm it. The next step is to focus at something four meters away. And once you find an object that's four meters away, you point it at it, meaning it's again pointing with a little square. Uh, then you can again use the ring on the front of the grip to actually focus your lens exactly on that spot. And once you're good, you click here. And that's the end of the calibration of your lens. And you only really have to do this once. Once you have it stored in there, then you just load your profile each time you start up the hand grip. Now setting up each of these lenses is very fast. And what it essentially stores is it stores the information, for example, for uh, how far does the focus ring turn, the same thing with the aperture, and then also for the zoom, if you happen to have a zoom lens. And also it's gonna store sort of the, the two key focus marks that you have to do when you're setting up each lens in order for the autofocus system in this to work with your manual or cinema lenses. And this is sort of where this unit, I would say, right away stands sort of above all the other competition and the other units I'm going to kind of compare it to. is because none of the other wireless follow focus systems allow you full, basically, auto control of your lenses. So basically uh, uh, giving you autofocus with standard cinema manual lenses you know, let's say you have some vintage lenses or maybe some anamorphic lenses, things like that. Well, now you can also have them uh, be, uh, you know, uh, out of focus. And that's all thanks to the LiDAR system, which obviously DJI has already had this with their uh, gimbal system. In case you're not sure what a LiDAR is, it essentially measures the distance between, uh, you know, itself here and whatever object is in front of it. Now, the cool thing about this LiDAR is that uh, it also has like an actual uh, RGB camera in there. And so you'll be able to see on the back screen here exactly what the LiDAR essentially sees. And you can actually select parts of your scene that the LiDAR is facing into and basically tell the system to just focus on those parts. So it's not just taking like an average reading or let's say a SPAD reading and just focusing on that uh, central point. So you can actually have intelligent tracking. And I've got to say that uh, with all of my testing of this LiDAR system, it is pretty damn amazing and accurate. Uh, when it comes to tracking different objects, but in particular when it comes to tracking people or faces. You can also change uh, the different profiles from flex spot to, for example, white. Now, when you're actually in the white profile, uh, you'll be able to see uh, the, the system recognize different faces with little squares around it. And then, uh, for example, if you have more than one face in your shot, then you can again use the wheel in the front of the grip to quickly switch between which face you want it to actually focus on.
and then for example if you switch to flex spot uh, you can just manually select for example a part of your scene that you want to focus on and then even if you wanted to actually track it you can then press the trigger on the front of the grip and you'll see that square will turn uh, yellow and now as you rotate it you'll see it'll be tracking that point here's another test showing tracking the person's body you can see it does a perfect job going towards and away from the camera uh, here's another test where I'm basically tracking the face again and I have an object partially blocking the face and it still does a great job, it holds focus. Now when I switch here to basically focus, uh, like a point focus, then obviously the focus will switch when the camera is brought in front of the face because it just focuses on whatever's in, in, that, uh, in that part of the frame. Uh, here again you can see another example of tracking the face, again it does a great job. Even when the person turns around, it still tracks that person's body. Where I notice sometimes it will have a uh, basically issue is when basically when uh, the person's body or face disappears for a long time and there's another face in front of it. Uh, here, even when he exits completely the frame, it still does not focus to my face there. It still kind of holds focus, waits for him to come back. And then it, you see it finds him again, keeps on tracking him. Now here, when I end up blocking my friend, and I continue blocking him, and then I turn around, that's when the focus got confused and it started tracking my face instead. Where it also has problems is when there's a lot of really fast moving motion far away from the camera. In this case, I was doing object tracking for the out of focus, and this is uh, like up here, he's going over 100 feet away from the camera. So that's when it started losing and basically didn't know what to track anymore and what to focus on. Now when I redid the exact same test, but I uh, set it to face and body tracking, then as you'll notice, it had no issues. It kept on tracking him all the way as he got far away from the camera. And then even here, when he kind of turns around, goes you know, behind some of these bushes, is partially obscured, and then re-emerges again, it just kept on working, no problem, as you can see. And it's the same case, for example, when, when I told him to ride a lot faster, but again, I had it set to face tracking. As you notice here, it's, it's, it just kept keeps you know focusing on his face perfectly. Uh, so really, the place where I noticed this out of focus has issue is when you're doing object tracking and it's really random, fast movements, especially when it's far away from the camera. And not that you can't fix that; it just simply means that you got to keep on again touching the, the the screen and telling the out of focus where you want it to focus. And for me, the issue is just simply that the screen is a little bit small, that's that touch screen on the hand grip. So maybe DJI can release like another screen or monitor that you can attach on top. That's just basically a bigger touch screen. So you can always, in object tracking, always have like a more clearer area, you know, in a bigger screen that you can touch and tell the, the out of focus where to track. But as you notice here, all these shots with my son, uh, this was all set to uh, face tracking, face and body tracking. And as you notice, it, again, it does a really good job. So I would say like 99% of the time when you're tracking the faces, it does an amazing job. Uh, now when it comes to object tracking, that's when in some cases we'll have issues. Like in here, I was also shooting slow motion, but these chickens are moving really, really fast. And so for example, like in this case, when the chicken starts running towards the camera, and this was again object tracking, that's when it still had an issue and it lost the focus a little bit. But once I touched the screen again, then it kept on tracking the chicken nicely. So really just having an option to get a larger touch screen would make uh, the object tracking that much easier because you have a larger touch screen so you can precisely select and tell the autofocus what to follow. In manual mode, obviously you can use the ring here on the front of the side grip to control the lens here, the focus of your lens. If you want to be very exact, you can do that obviously. Uh, just by gradually turning the, the ring. But if you want to do really fast and you know large movements, you can obviously do that too. And as you notice, the focus ring is very responsive. Uh, there really isn't any noticeable delay. Now just keep in mind that these motors are very powerful. So you do want to always make sure that your lens is calibrated and properly set up before you start using it. Because if you didn't do that, and let's say the motor reaches the end of your a focus pull on your lens, it could actually damage the gears or the lens itself. The motors themselves have, as you can see, these little lights here and, and uh, letters F, I, Z. 
And that just simply represents focus, uh, iris, and zoom. So it just tells you what setting, or basically, or what what this lens is set to, or basically which channel, uh, so that your uh, hand grip or the hand unit knows which lens it's actually operating right now. And you can easily reassign any of these motors to, for example, like you can see this one right now is switched to be for the iris, but just by tapping this button, I can switch it to focus or to zoom. Now, let's say you do want to manually adjust the focus of your lens, uh, but you want to do it remotely. So again, that's where the hand unit comes in real handy. You'll turn it on and uh, pretty much right away it just connects with your system. And then it's pretty straightforward. You're just going to use the, the wheel here to adjust the focus of your lens. Now, by the way, this basically remembers, again, your lens profile. So you do not have to reconfigure or recalibrate the lens each time you start up the system. Unless, obviously, you've taken the motors off of the gears. Then in that case, you do want to quickly recalibrate it. Now, to recalibrate each lens is very fast, especially once you have it already stored uh, in the system because you're just essentially telling the motors to test out the, the maximum position on each of their focus, zoom, or iris rings. Just like on the side grip, it shows you, for example, uh, what, what, what focus setting you're in or what percentage. Now, of course, you can control the iris uh, by using this knob here. Uh, and uh, as you can see, it's again, very responsive. Uh, if you want to, you can also control the zoom of your lens if you connect the third motor uh, using here this rocker. So the great thing about this is that with just one wireless hand unit you can control all three motors. Another thing I really like though is that you can actually set different markings here uh, just by pressing the A and B button here and it will actually sort of put like uh, they're almost like hard stops so you're actually going to feel like when you're getting close to your hard mark and then it will stop uh, so that you can't actually turn the ring but if you apply enough force then you will be able to still go past it. So it's sort of like a haptic feedback, but, but I would say it's better than that because it's not, not like a vibration that you're feeling. It actually feels like there's a, like a hard stop in there, as if you were dealing with a traditional uh, you know, follow focus system. Now, the, the way that it's done is it, well, at least I'm assuming that it's done using some kind of magnets, uh, because you can adjust in the settings here, because this, by the way, is a touch screen here. So you can adjust all of the settings the same way as you can do with the touch screen on the back of the side grip here. And you can adjust, uh, for example, choose the different lenses that you have stored in the system or adjust the settings, the intensity, for example, of the hard stops and things like that. Uh, the unit also allows you to attach a monitor here on the top. So, for example, if you have like the, the wireless monitors from DJI, it will actually also be able to power that monitor uh, using the battery uh, up here inside of this hand unit. And this is a, a Sony NPF style battery. So how does the DJI Focus Pro compare to, for example, the Tilta uh, Nucleus Nano 2 or the small rig uh, wireless uh, focusing system? You notice the side grips that they come in uh, are very similar. Now, obviously, these are slightly smaller, like the grips are the same as the DJI Focus Pro, uh, but they don't have that screen, obviously, because they don't have LiDAR. All of the side grips have also a ring here in the front that you can use. Uh, with your index finger to adjust the focus of your lenses. Uh, now these two hand units are actually powered uh, through external batteries that you gotta, you gotta put in. And also both of these hand grips can trigger cameras that uh, these systems are compatible with uh, through the little record button. Uh, small rig here is on the front, tilt has in the back. And as, like I said, the DJI has the record button on the back of the hand grip. When it comes to the hand units, uh, as you can see, uh, the one on top is from uh, Tilta. Here in the middle we have uh, the small rig hand unit and on the bottom is the one from DJI Focus Pro. Uh, they all do the same things. They allow you to remotely adjust the focus obviously of your lenses. The small rig hand unit as you can see has your ring obviously has your little digital display here so you can see all of your settings. You have also a record trigger button uh, and, you know, all other set, uh, buttons here, so you can adjust all of the settings that are really necessary. The hand unit from Tilta Pro uh, is very similar again. It's just, again, that ring style. Now, it doesn't really have a marking disc on it, uh, but you basically can mark your stops here uh, on the actual display. And you can also adjust the settings here because this is a touch screen. So you can adjust all of your settings of, like, the, the strength of your motor, the haptic feedback, and all of those other things. Again, I'm not going to get into all those details here in this video. If you guys want to see 
a detailed review of this, then check out my website at tomantosfilms.com. The DJI Focus Pro hand unit is again similar in the sense that it has also your wheel here. You have your marking discs, which you can take out and put other ones. It does actually come with extra marking discs. And like I said, you can also obviously digitally mark it just like you can on the Tilta. You have also a touchscreen display so you can change all your settings. Plus, I do like the fact that you have this nav here for controlling the other motors, whether it's the, the iris or the zoom. Same thing with up here. You can also trigger the camera remotely. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, just really easy to use sort of hand grip and very re responsive. Uh, when it comes to these other two units, uh, you'll also be able to remotely uh, adjust the focus of your lenses. So if that's what you want, definitely you can look at any of these options. But of course, the big advantage of the DJ Focus Pro is the fact that it does have the LiDAR and it does have that uh, out of focus uh, capability, which essentially means you can turn any old manual vintage or even anamorphic lens into now a full uh, out of focus lens, which is something that obviously uh, the Tilta or the small rig uh, wireless follow focus systems cannot do. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informational. If you do have any other questions about the DJI Focus Pro kit, uh, then definitely let me know in the comment section below. Of course, if you have any other more in-depth sort of questions, uh, whether it's about this or anything else that's filmmaking related, then as always, just head on over to my website at tomantosfilms.com. That's it for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!